My name is Sunita Chandrasekharan. I am an associate professor in the Computer and Information Sciences Department at the University of Delaware and also direct the First State AI Institute that we have recently launched. I am also the vice chair for the State of Delaware AI Commission. And uh, my research spans uh, predominantly on high performance computing and my comp computational research programming lab. We work on uh, traditional as well as applied computer science. We started off with uh, looking into programming models, directive-based programming models, especially compiler work and all of that. Um, and that led to us exploring uh, some real-world applications in the biophysics, solar physics, plasma physics areas where these were codes and real-world applications that have never been sped up or never been accelerated. Uh, so we, we took them and we tried to modernize some of these codes and saw many, many, many times speed up. For example, there was a code on uh, predicting chemical shift of protein structures and they were running for hours, like 15 hours, and we were able to bring it down to about 46 seconds. We kicked off the uh, First Year AI Institute at UD. Uh, it's about two, two and a half months old, so we are brand new, which is making it all very exciting. And we are looking forward to exploring sciences of different fields, different disciplines, across colleges and across the entire campus. So lots of fun things to do. We are super excited to use the ASUS Ascent GX10 for um, not only training and inferencing, but also uh, exploring you know, how we can run some open source large language models on these systems, fine tune some of these models towards uh, specific needs of the project. We are very excited that there is such a box that can literally sit next to a desktop or a laptop and we can build small local prototypes on a small device such as this before we are able to scale it up on large systems and this often helps a lot because you want to try you want to test prototype you know smaller projects which is usually the case with research academic settings and the way we are uh, you know looking into and uh, receiving um, lots of case studies from across many disciplines, often it requires creating small prototypes, right? They are not ready to scale. And it becomes important that we can use systems like this, to play with it and run models on it. Uh, it looks like it can handle uh, several billions of parameter model, which is the kind of uh, GPUs we are looking for, and build out these small prototypes before we move it to bigger clusters and throw more data sets. These kind of GPUs, like these you know, Ascent GX10s, because especially in higher ed, there is not only research, there is also teaching, right? We, we would love to use this in classroom settings and probably have a, you know, students SSH into some of these GPUs, but it's important to show them what they are using. And I take GPUs to classrooms to teach, and it creates that aha moment. Right, and I have a course that I will teach on research software engineering in spring, and we we will be soliciting case studies from our external partners and UD partners, and I can imagine about 20, 25 students um, at different timelines, you know, during the semester, using the GPUs to run banking data, you know, uh, healthcare data, or art conservation data. You never know, right? Um, so I think this makes a difference in the higher ed, especially because it's important to run things locally before we can dream about you know, going bigger. Because you don't want to waste time and resources on a large supercomputer, but you want to test them out locally. And that's why this kind of pieces are super critical for a higher ed academic setting. In higher ed, um, often you don't probably have the infrastructure or the bandwidth or the cooling to put a very large system. Right? And so here is where putting many of these together in a power packed envelope um, at the same time while we have restricted budgeting, even if there is a large institute, we are working on a tight budget. So here is where, you know, you know, putting all these, putting systems like this or GPUs like this together is already building a super powerful cluster 
which is perfect for uh, education in a for university setting. Yeah, we have uh, started to look at different types of workloads, meaning we have gotten faculty from uh, coastal science, uh, sport analytics, uh, irrigation facilities, uh, plant and soil sciences, you know, art conservation. They all are very different workloads, right? So in that context, for example, sport analytics, we have baseball data, softball data, and we are trying to understand pitchers' performance and how to provide coaches with more data on how they can uh, coach athletes, you know, on pitching, for example. The other um, workload we will have, and I would love to throw those kind of workloads on this kind of system, is art conservation, where we have data from museums um, on textile, wood, canvas, etc., books. And in the very small scale project, we already identified toxic elements like arsenic and copper and mercury in some of these books, which have led to um, dilapidation of these materials, right? We want to preserve them, that's a goal. Now, this is not only, right now we're only working with Winterthur Museum, but imagine if this scales across the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast, and the entire country, then you can imagine the kind of data set that we would have. Now, if we collected all of it, did some data analysis, data engineering, then this makes a perfect box for us to um, you know, uh, to process more data. Right now, we don't have the power to do that locally, right? We're just using a laptop. But having connected this to the laptop, um, we are able to throw more data sets on these kind of systems and explore more predictive models on how these museums can preserve their art. There is so much to do. <laughs> there is so much to do. Uh, within UD, there are plenty of things we want to do, including not just research, but also operation tasks. You know, what if we could create chatbots to query um, a, f a bunch of questions uh, pertaining or customized to a particular operational task, right? It could be um, uh, compliance regulations, it could be uh, we write grants, you know, and every grant has its own uh, uh, paperwork to follow, legal paperwork to follow. What if we used chat box to query what are the restrictions to be used and not used for a particular grant? It could be an IH, could be DOD, could be DOE, what, what have you. But right now it's all done very manually. And what if we automated some pieces of it, right? And what if we were able to query AI research happening on campus, AI education happening on campus, instead of sending survey forms what if we create a chatbot, you know, make it appear on our website and uh, have UD community use it? Um, so there are different ways we plan to explore these GPUs. Uh, when you talk about foundational traditional computer science, you know, you would use an LLM and you would e explore the weights and parameters, explore the model, throw data set and see how far you can go. At the same time, I think it's also critical to think about the interdisciplinary science, where you're applying several of these machine learning and deep learning skills towards a domain, a research domain, right? And that is part of the other large NSF grant that we got last year, which is Democratizing Access to Research Software Engineering, Darcy, where we collaborate with political science, coastal science, fintech science, and multiple other disciplines and we have gotten their data set and we are trying to see how we can apply AI to interdisciplinary science because that's that helps somebody like me with a computer science background to think about what are the gaps in the field of traditional AI uh, where we can make a difference and I often feel like if it is driven from the interdisciplinary science then you're working towards a problem Right, it also opens up ideas um, uh, and, and that makes it all very exciting for us, for our professionals and especially for our students. So I think there are you know, um, plenty of opportunities it opens up when you have something that you have access to. So the, the opportunities are endless. <laughs> That's the long and the short of it. The AI is evolving and uh, there is just a lot to do. And we are constantly looking for partners to work with, uh, collaborate with on not only hardware purchase, but software and operations and uh, any solutions ASUS would have that we can leverage for 
numerous types of workloads on campus um, which involves research, education, operations, uh, all encompassing within, within an ethics bubble, right? So they would love to explore how we can work more closely because I think it's important. Thank you very much, ASUS, uh, for giving us these uh, Ascent GX10 units. And we cannot wait to see what kind of cool science these units can open up for us. And we're very much looking forward to it. So thank you very much.